Well, good afternoon, my YouTube brethren. I hope you had a great Memorial Day weekend and hope you had a day off to celebrate with your family and friends and all those things that make a long weekend uh, great. I hope you guys took advantage of that. It was dove season here in our neck of the woods and we went fishing on Monday morning and it was really choppy and windy and we didn't catch but one fish all morning. So I took the video from that and I scrapped it because there wasn't anything good on there to share anyway. And then uh, we went and filled up our deer feeders and we went and shot some doves uh, last night. And man, I had just a great time. The weather was decent. It was windy all day and it was so windy. I just, I didn't put any video together because it was, just didn't hear, it didn't sound good at all. You couldn't hear anything. and. Uh, it was just aggravating. And also, uh, Facebook and, and their firearms policy and hunting policies is really strange. And I I don't really want to push that envelope so much where they have to demonetize or, you know, give me a strike or something like that. I don't know much about it. And probably a channel as small as mine, it wouldn't matter. But uh, anyway, so I just opted not to do a video. But uh, today we have this huge cold front that rolled in. So yesterday it was about 92 degrees and uh, windy. And today it's all of 60 degrees and it was really cold this morning. I had a fence I had to put back up this morning and uh, man, I had to wear a big jacket and it was just kind of miserable. But uh, I did have to take care of our chickens. And so that's what I've been doing uh, earlier today is just making sure all of our, our chickens were taken care of. We have a mobile coop and that mobile coop has about 80 hens. Uh, a couple of different breeds of hens, and then we have this goose that's in there too. He's a guard goose, and his job is to keep the, the aerial predators away from the chickens, or, or really, his job is to warn the chickens that there's an aerial predator around. So if you're down there and you're watching and you see one kind of flying around, He'll, he'll run out and he'll put his wings up in the air real big and uh, he, he'll make sure that they're all up under the mobile coop and that way the aerial guys can't get them. And so far we've had them in this, this setup with, for about three months and uh, we haven't lost any of them to, to hawks or, or raptors of any sort. Uh, and the, the netting around it is electric and so they stay away from that. It's a really good system. We move them across the pasture. I really I really like it. It's, it's a nice setup and uh, it's a good way to get eggs that are natural and on pasture and um, they're really good for you. And it's, it's a great setup so I'm kind of excited about it. They are supposed to start laying, uh, I believe next week is when they're uh, via the calendar, uh, the calendar date, that's when they're supposed to start laying but we'll see how that goes. So anyway, the reason I want to make this video was uh, there was a crazy article I found today on uh, Wired to Fish and I'll put that article up on Facebook and my Instagram account so you can just go over there uh, Facebook and Instagram both Pastoral Homestead you can just search for it you'll it'll show up. Uh, it's a crazy article about these two guys that um, that cheated in this bass tournament at Lake Powell. And what they did was they went and caught some fish prior to the tournament. And then the Thursday before the tournament, they brought them to the lake and then kind of passed them off on as fish that they caught during the tournament. And they couldn't nail the guys at the tournament, even though apparently they, they thought something was a little, a little wonky, but they couldn't figure it out at the tournament. So they went through and they did this really scientific forensic uh, investigation and found these guys guilty. So the fish didn't match a Lake Powell fish. They had a different body size, a different body shape. Uh, the red fins indicated that they had been under some stress. And man, it was just this, this whole exhibit of how they figured out where these fish actually came from versus uh, where they ended up in the tournament. Uh, and the crazy thing is that they were charged with a third degree, a third class felony. So, I mean, it's not a high class felony, but they charged them with a felony. And then also they charged them with a couple of other misdemeanors. So it was like a $3,000 fine and some community service. But the big thing was that they, they suspended them from hunting for two full years. No hunting license for these two gentlemen for two years. And for five years, they're not allowed to fish. They're not allowed to have a, a fishing license. So I just absolutely blew my mind that these tournament directors now are getting serious about this stuff. And it if you cheat, man, they're going to catch you. They're going to find out. So I'm just telling you, not worth cheating. I've only been around one time that, that somebody cheated in a tournament and they had put a cage uh, in, in, in the back of a cove somewhere and they had put these fish in this cage and somebody saw them and they went back there and they were messing around and I, I'm not sure how it all transpired, but basically what happened is is they figured out that there was a cage back there holding all these fish and they turned them in and you know, they lost their winnings. And what was really sad, it was only a tournament with like 30 boats. And so the winning was just, you know, a few hundred dollars, less than a thousand each. 
Uh, so really bad to give up your reputation and uh, your goodwill to all your, your bass fishing buddies just to win what, you know, $1,000? And then minus expenses and everything that you put into the tournament, you've got five, six, seven hundred dollars and you, you know, lose your reputation over that? Uh, it's just it's crazy to me. The, 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 the level of stupidity that people will go to uh, for, for a little bit of ease when you, when you could just, you know, fish the tournament and if you win, great and if you don't win it's not that big of a deal you know we're not on the professional circuit here i just uh, man the cheating just drives me absolutely crazy so i wanted to draw y'all's attention to that article go check it out you can also just type in in, in your google search wired to fish or wire it's wired to fish and, and they it's a good article and it goes through all of the techniques they use to figure out how these fish belonged in this other fishery before they were introduced into lake powell and in this, this tournament it's really interesting so go check it out and then also wanted to update you guys on the the shop and the boat and all that there's a reason that i've been a little apprehensive and in, in tearing into the yellow boat i've got a wrist injury in my right wrist and it's a very unmanly thing to say that i have i'm having a hard time doing some work uh, because of it but I'm, I'm getting it worked on i had an x-ray and an mri done and i think they figured out kind of what's going on so i'm going tomorrow to get some injections in there and then also we'll do some physical therapy and hopefully we can get that back on the mend here pretty quick because it's it's killing me at the moment yeah so getting in and like turning bolts and trying to get things removed and it, it was it was super painful when I did just some little stuff, and um, it's been really aggravating. I know that that sounds like a cop out excuse, uh, but it's just it is what it is. And so, kind of bear with me. I've got a lot of things going on, and we got a. I just moved into this house, and it's got a shop in the back that needs a little work, but it's going to be a great shop. I'm really excited about it. You know, I just sold my boat. I got all my fishing junk in here that was out of that. So. We've got to figure out the boat situation and it's just going to be an interesting fall um, and hopefully we can get this hand thing figured out and then we'll be able to, to rock and roll. So bear with me. I really appreciate you guys. Thanks for the encouraging words. I had some very encouraging comments and some personal messages and uh, man, it just means a lot that you guys uh, drop in and, 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 and give those words whenever you get a chance. It, it means more than you, it means more than you know uh, that it does. So I really do appreciate it. God bless y'all. Have a great safe afternoon and we will catch you on the next video. Video.